Welcome back to the three months of modal logic, the sequel to 100 Days of Logic, here with Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing deontic logic, looking at the semantics of standard deontic logic. Now, what are semantics? Well, semantics is the study of meaning. So we've kind of provided some of the grammar, some of the syntax for deontic logic so far. We've provided some of those kind of deductive rules that allow us to get from one statement to another, but we haven't gotten a really formal and rigorous study of the meaning of each of these terms. We've done kind of a preliminary explanation of what they mean, but not a really formal understanding of what their meaning is. So we're going to follow Kripke in this video and define them in terms of categorical logic and possible worlds. So if you're not brushed up on categorical logic, standard deontic logic, or the accessibility relation especially from the previous video, you should check that out now. And of course, modal logic and possible worlds. Whew, there's a lot going into this. So let's go. So it is obligatory that P. What does that mean? What's the semantics backing that up? Well, we're going to have worlds in kind of two categories. One that is the set of all worlds that bear the acceptability relation to I. That's A-I. We'll remember that from the previous video. Once again, acceptability means that if a world bears the acceptability relation to I, that means all obligations in I are true in that world. And we're also going to have a category of all worlds where P is true. Now, this is going to be set up in the following way. We're going to say there are no worlds that bear the acceptability relation to I and P E is false. There are no worlds that bear the acceptability relation to I and P is false. Let's make that really clear what we're saying. If it is obligatory that P, we are saying that all worlds that bear the acceptability relation to I are also worlds where P is true. Okay? Now, if you know categorical logic, this should look very familiar. It is obligatory that P in I can be understood in terms of an Aristotelian categorical logic universal affirmative statement. All AI worlds are also worlds where P is true, since by definition an AI world is a world where all obligations in I are true. There's no way for all of the obligations in I to be met, P to be an obligation in I, and P to be false in some world where all of the obligations in I are met. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. We're going to do some other very similar versions of this that are going to hopefully keep you on board. But for now, let's do an example. So let's say it is obligatory that no one lies. So AI is going to be all worlds where all obligations in I hold true. And our other circle is going to be all worlds where no one lies. So let's say one of the obligations in I is that no one can lie. So, any world that fulfills all of the obligations in I must fulfill the obligation that no one lies there. Therefore, any world that is in AI must also be in all of the worlds where no one lies. All of the worlds that have all of the obligations of I fulfilled must also be worlds where no one lies if no one lies is obligatory. So if it's obligatory that no one lies in world I, that means that there can be no world in which all of the obligations of world I hold true, and yet there are people that lie. And there exists at least one world, because of our seriality axiom, where all of the obligations of I hold true, and therefore no one lies. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense of how we're defining obligatory in terms of possible worlds and our, accept our acceptability relation. We're going to move forward with an example for each of our distinctions to hopefully make this even clearer. So let's talk about permissibility. How are we going to define permissibility? What semantics are we going to give that? Well, once again, we're going to split into two worlds, all worlds that bear the acceptability relation to I, and all worlds where P is true. And instead of clearing out a nothing in the all worlds that bear the acceptability relation to I, we're going to just put a something in that center spot. There is at least one world where all of the obligations of I are met, 
and P is true. Let's make sense of that. So there is some world where P is true and all obligations are met. That means the same thing as it is permissible that P. There is some possible world where you don't have to break any of your obligations and you can still do P. P is permissible. There are, hopefully, no confusions there. Okay, if it's permissible that P at I, that means that there is at least one world in which P is true that bears the acceptability relation to I. In other words, there is at least one world where all the obligations of world I are fulfilled and P is true. Hopefully that makes sense, and hopefully it also makes sense how obligation would then imply permissibility, because obligation, we saw that x in the center already, so the x has to follow down here. Hopefully this makes sense. So in case it doesn't, let's take an example. So let's say it's permissible to swear. So AI is going to be all worlds where all of the obligations of I are true, and our second circle is going to be all worlds where someone swears. And what it is permissible to swear is telling us is saying that there is at least one world where all of the obligations of I are true and someone swears. If, for example, it were an obligation in I that you cannot swear, there would be no possible worlds where all of the obligations are fulfilled and someone swears. So as long as there's at least one world where all the obligations are fulfilled and where someone swears, it has to at least be permissible for someone to swear. If it's permissible to swear in world I, then that means that there is at least one world where someone swears and all of the obligations of world I are fulfilled. Once again, hopefully this is making sense. I realize it's a complicated idea, but the basic principle is we're taking categorical logic and using it to provide meaning to our statements about permissibility obligation, and so on, with the help of modal logic in possible worlds. Moving on, the next one we have is it is impermissible that P. Once again, we're going to have all worlds that bear the acceptability relation to I and all worlds where P is true. Our Venn diagram is going to look like this. So if it's impermissible that P, that means that of all the worlds that all the obligations of I are fulfilled in, there's not going to be a single one of those worlds where P is true. No matter how you fulfill all of the obligations, there is not going to be a single world where P is true. Okay, And there's at least going to be one world that fulfills that relation, once again, because of our seriality axiom. That's why we have the X over in that first thing. Check out the previous video where we mentioned seriality and explain a little bit about that. If it is impermissible that P at I, we always say at for possible worlds, usually at least, that means that there is no possible world in which all of the obligations in I are true and P is true. And there's at least one world where all of the obligations in I are true. That second part, like I said, is going to apply for all of these. It's going to be kind of the seriality axiom that's going on here. Okay? So, let's take a look at an example that will hopefully make this even more clear. So, it's impermissible to rape. Let's say this is the case in world I. So, AI is all worlds where all of the obligations of I are true, and the second circle is all worlds where someone rapes. The point is, if it's impermissible to rape, then all of the worlds where all of the obligations of I are true there can be no one world that also is a world where someone commits a rape. Because if someone committed a rape, it would immediately exclude that from being one of those kinds of worlds where all of the obligations in I are true. And that has to at least be one world where all of the obligations are true from Kant's law. If it is impermissible to rape in world I, then there is no world in which all of the obligations in I are fulfilled and a rape is committed. There is also at least one world where all of the obligations in I are fulfilled. Hopefully, once again, that makes sense. We're going to move on to our final predicate. It is omissible that. It is omissible that P. Once again, we'll have the same setup here. AI being all worlds that bear the acceptability relation to I. 
and our second being all worlds where p is true. It is omissible that p means there is at least one world where p is not true and all of the obligations are fulfilled. P is not included in those obligations. Basically, there's some world where P is not true, but obligations are fulfilled because P is not included in obligations. That's what omissibility is about. It's not an obligation. So if it is omissible that P at I, then there is some AI world where all of the obligations in world I are true, but P is false. Once again, I know omissibility especially is confusing. Hopefully, that makes some sense. And hopefully, you're seeing a pattern and a correlation, or at least an isomorphic relationship between these comparisons and our categorical logic. Let's give, finally, an example. Is omissible to eat oats. You don't have to eat oats. And once again, we have all worlds where all the obligations of I are true, and all worlds where someone eats oats. There's at least one world where all of the obligations of I are true and no one eats oats. Because if it was an obligation of world I that at least one person ate oats, then we couldn't say that it's omissible to eat oats. So omissible to eat oats in world I, then there is some world where all of the obligations of I are true, but no one eats oats. Hopefully that's clear. I realize it's a lot of information. It's a pretty complicated video for these videos, but hopefully you have a sense of it. To make this maybe even more clear, let's directly relate this to categorical logic. So all worlds where all obligations of I are fulfilled are worlds where P is true. That's obligatory, that P, and it corresponds to an A statement in categorical logic. Permissible that P is given the meaning of there exists a world where all obligations of I are fulfilled and P is true. That corresponds to an I statement in categorical logic. Impermissible that P, no worlds where all obligations of I are fulfilled are worlds where P is true. That's the meaning of impermissible that P, and that's going to correspond to an E statement. And finally, Omissible that P, there exists a world where all obligations of I are fulfilled and P is not true. Going to correspond, of course, to an O statement. If this was confusing, I encourage you rewatch the videos on deontic logic, rewatch categorical logic. It was pretty confusing to me when I first learned it, so it may take some time for this to kind of sink in as a way of expressing the meaning of these predicates. Up next, we're going to go farther with semantics. We're going to add in our augmented deontic logic axiom and the kind of double obligation axiom and see how that changes the semantics we have. Watch a new video every single day for 100 days here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.